crime on the rise, a surge in crime, a massive increase in crime. This is something you've undoubtedly heard. I hear it all the time. Is it accurate though? Well, in a way, yes. But also, no, not at all. What if I told you the crime rate has been approaching both record highs and record lows at the same time? Now I'm sure you're asking, how is that possible? Well, let's take a look at the numbers to find out. When we talk about crime rates, we're referring to the number of reported criminal offenses per 100,000 people. This is done to provide a consistent measure to account for fluctuations in the population. All right, let's get into it. So if we compare 2020 to 2019, we definitely see a sharp rise in violent crime. Well, that's it, folks. Case closed. See ya. Have a good one. Okay, okay, okay. Of course, that's not the whole story. Because while there was an increase in violent crime, here is the overall crime rate from 2019 to 2020, which actually went down. And the rate is so low, in fact, that it's actually at its lowest level in nearly 60 years. 1963 was the last year that was lower. So how can this be? What explains this discrepancy? Well, different crimes are following different trends. Some are going up, others are going down. When all types of crime are treated equally and everything is added together, the crimes that are decreasing are doing so at a greater rate than those that are increasing, hence the decline in overall crime. So what then explains this discrepancy the most? Property crimes. Property crime rates have been consistently declining since peaking in 1991. 2020 saw the lowest property crime rates since 1962. Larcenies, by far the most common crime tracked in the UCR, account for most of this decline, but other property crimes have been declining as well, including burglaries, which have been trending downward since peaking in 1980. The other two property crimes, motor vehicle theft and arson, have also been declining, although they saw a slight increase in 2020, but not to any great extent. Motor vehicle theft basically went back up to what it was in 2009-2010, and arson went back up to the same rate as 2017. They are both still very far away from their late 1980s, early 1990s peaks. So that's the property crimes, which accounted for most of the overall decline in crime. But what about violent crime specifically, which again did increase from 2019 to 2020? Well, even though violent crime did increase overall, this does not apply to all violent crimes. For example, robberies followed a similar pattern as property crimes. 2020 saw the lowest robbery rates since 1965. Robberies peaked in 1991 and have been on a continuous downslope since with a few minor temporary increases from 2006 to 2008. And rape followed a completely different pattern actually increasing steadily from 2013 to 2018, then decreasing in 2019 and 2020. Aggravated assaults have also been slowly rising since bottoming out in 2014, only to shoot up in 2020, increasing to the highest rate since 2008. But that's the crime rate, which is what we've been looking at so far as it accounts for differences in the population. But when we instead look at the overall number of reported incidents, Aggravated assaults were roughly on par with what they were in 1999 and 2000, nearly 100,000 more than in 2019. That's 214,000 away from the 1993 peak of 1.14 million, but still the highest number of aggravated assaults in 20 years, and the third largest percentage increase from the previous year. Only 1964 and 1986 were larger. And then there's homicides. Homicide rates increased dramatically in 2020 to the highest rates since 1997. This is a major increase from what we've seen in the last two decades, but still a far cry from when homicide rates were at their peak. In fact, the homicide rate in 2020 was still lower than it was for the nearly 30-year period from 1968 to 1997. So is the violent crime increase massively overhyped? Well, not so fast because the overall number of homicides is the most concerning. There were 21,570 homicides in 2020, the highest since 1995, and only 3,500 away from the 1993 peak of just under 25,000, which had the most homicides of any year on record. So more concerning than the rate increase, which wasn't very high historically, is the increase in the overall number of homicides. Unprecedented? No. 
there were more homicides in 1980 and 81 and from 1990 to 1995. But 2020 was the largest ever increase in homicides from the year prior, with a 29% increase and nearly 5,000 more homicides than in 2019. That said, 2019 was a fairly low baseline to start from. So, if we take this into account by looking at the percentage change from the average number of homicides in the previous five years, as opposed to just one year, we see the increase is the most substantial in 50 years, but not the biggest ever. 1968, 1969, 1971 were larger. But in terms of the difference in the number of homicides from the previous five years, as opposed to the percentage change, 2020 is still the largest ever increase beating the previous record high of 1971 by over 600. So it is certainly concerning that homicides have gone up so much in such a short time. But an increase from one year to the next does not necessarily mean it is part of a larger trend or pattern. So there's another crucial question to consider. Is this something that is unprecedented? Have we seen similar violent crime increases in recent years? Actually, yes, although certainly not to the same degree. There was an increase from 2014 to 2016. And looking at this graph alone, you would conclude violent crime is definitely on the rise, right? But the picture this graph is presenting is a bit misleading. How so? Well, what did the crime rate look like before 2014? Is this part of a continued upward trend? If we go back a little further, an entirely different picture emerges. Violent crime was on a downward trend between 2010 and 2014, and only in 2015 did it start to rise again, but still not to the same level it had been just a few years prior in 2012. The only way to say violent crime was on an upward trend here is to selectively begin with a historically low crime rate in 2014 and judge any increases in subsequent years based on how it is higher than this low point. But what happened after 2016? Did the violent crime rates continue to increase? Well, no. 2016 turned out to be a temporary high point. Violent crime started to go back down again as it had been previously and continued to decline until it was even lower in 2019 than it was in 2013. So in terms of the overall violent crime rate, yes, there indeed was an increase in 2020, but an increase from a low baseline level to nearly the exact same rate it had been in 2012. And again, this is coming off historically high levels of violent crime. The overall violent crime rate isn't anywhere near the same level it was at the early 1990s peak, even with the substantial increase in homicides, because it is the rarest crime of all. But because it is undoubtedly the most serious, it warrants the extra attention it receives. It's important to keep in mind that crime goes through cycles. It has peaks and valleys. We're coming off historical drops in crime beginning in the 1990s that followed historically high levels of crime in the 1970s and 80s. Going back even further, crime increased in the 1920s and 30s when organized crime first appeared during the Prohibition era, the U.S. Constitutional Amendment prohibiting the sale of alcohol, that went really well, followed by the Great Depression. It was then fairly stable during World War II and the post-war era through the 1950s. Homicides even declined during this time before beginning to increase dramatically beginning in the 1960s. And these cycles are from just a less than 100 year period. So it is possible that crime, like so many other things, naturally cycles through increases and decreases over time. And over the last three decades that we've experienced not so much of a crime decline as rather a return to a normal, typical, or more average level of crime, referred to as regression to the mean. Now, will violence in the form of homicides and assaults continue to increase or remain at high levels that, that they were in 2020? The available data for 2021 certainly indicates that this could be the case, at least in the short term. But is this part of a new long-term trend? Certainly possible. It's also possible, though, that this increase in violent crime is largely a reflection of how just massively screwed up the last two years really have been. We've experienced the deadliest year in U.S. history, with not only a surge in homicides and a surge in overdose deaths from opioids, but the worst mass casualty event in U.S. history, surpassing the casualties of the Civil War, with the deaths of over 770,000 people and counting in America alone, and over 5 million around the world, and the backlash to the public health restrictions brought on by the pandemic, widespread economic turmoil, 
mass social unrest, uprisings over racial injustice that have amounted to what could possibly be the largest protests in U.S. history, and a highly contentious presidential election that ended with an insurrection at the U.S. Capitol, those are just a few notable highlights. So it's possible that violent crime goes back down again in 2022 and beyond, as it did in 2017. Or we may be looking at a new long-term trend. The future is notoriously difficult to predict, and only time will tell.